Hi, uh, welcome tonight to um, Gay Liberation Network's uh, CAN TV uh, monthly presentation. Uh, my name is Roger Fraser, and I'm a retired school teacher. And I have with me today uh, Mel Ferrand, uh, from the uh, who's a Chicago teacher, very well experienced uh, elementary school teacher. Uh, before we get started on our interview, Mel, I, I do have a few and a couple of announcements I want to uh, get through quickly. First, I want to uh, urge everyone to call in, um, uh, but give us a little time here to get into our topic uh, before you make your calls, and we'll try to uh, uh, receive them. Um, in addition to that, uh, you know, if you'd like to get in touch with uh, Gay Liberation Network, uh, go to uh, www.gayliberation.net. Um, and also, uh, tomorrow, it... Um, uh, on Saturday and Sunday, look for us. If you're going to be out on Halstead Street at North Halstead Street Market Days, please stop by and uh, say hi. And uh, um, you know, and uh, you know, we 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 we'd love to st to chat with you and uh, so forth. Okay. And then, oh, oh by the way, the last uh, our, our our location is just south of uh, Addison. And last, uh, I, you may have heard about our very successful bo uh, uh, demonstration in front of Chick-fil-A down on Chicago Avenue uh, this Wednesday evening. Um, it was well attended. It was very vigorous and spirited uh, rally. And I hope that all of you will join us in the boycott of uh, Chick-fil-A. Um, well, let's get started. Mel, uh, as I said before, you're experienced elementary school teacher, and you're active in the uh, Chicago Teachers Union. Now, y you you've told me before the show that you are the chairperson of the CTU's uh, LGBT Rights Committee. Um, is that an organization, Mel, that's concerned with the rights of LGBT students or teachers or both? Um, well, actually both, although our focus is teachers. We are a committee of the Chicago Teachers Union, which of course the, the main purpose of it is to make sure that we have a legitimate and fair contract. And as part of that, our committee was formed about 14 years ago because similar to GLN, we want to make sure that all groups are um, represented. So we have a women's rights committee and we have GLBT and we have a diversity committee because all voices and all um, members, brothers and sisters of the union need to make sure that their rights are protected within the pages of the of the contract each time that it's renewed. Um, what the first thing actually that our committee fought for when it first was formed was actually sexual orientation being added to the discrimination clause or the non-discrimination clause because you know we had race we had religion but sexual orientation was absent and we fought and made sure that that was added and since then it has been the next thing we did we did was work on um, domestic partner benefits because our brothers and sisters that were straight and married were able to offer those benefits to their spouses and we were not so that was a huge um, campaign that we also fought for and made sure because even within the union 
sometimes we kind of forget, you know, the majority still tends to dominate and we have to remind ourselves, wait a minute, you know, everybody needs to be included. I see. And uh, yeah, um, is there any such thing as, uh, I mean, I've heard this as, as a former teacher myself, uh, is there such a thing as bullying going on in the, uh, it, we, uh, we know there's bullying against students, but right. is there also bullying going on yeah, against uh, uh, LGBT identified, uh, self-identified, uh, out of the closet teachers? Absolutely. And even ones that may not be out of the closet who, for whatever reasons, um, don't conform to gender standards. They are absolutely bullied not only by colleagues and administrators, but often students, um, which is very shocking. And, you know, you kind of take a step back and say, how can that be? But students, um, you know, feel that if there's something that somebody may be, um, be able to be pressured on or, uh, I'm trying to think of the right word, just bullied, I guess, really, yeah. that's, that's yeah. the bottom line. If, yeah. if they feel that they can get away with bullying sure. and that's part of how they operate, then, sure. then everybody in the school building is, is free game. Yeah, right. It, 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 I mean, it's, it's probably one of those things where, uh, you know, bullying doesn't just stop at the school door, you know, with respect to students. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a national phenomenon. People get, it, people get bullied on their jobs as well, and teachers have a, uh, have a job. So that's right. very interesting. And and, uh, and I'm sure uh, enlightening to our uh, to our audience that uh, teachers themselves can be subject to uh, uh, to attacks and bullying right within their own schools. Um, the uh, uh, do you do you do you specifically address issues with respect to students on the uh, the rights committee, or is it basically just for the adults? Um, I guess I would say it's both because, of course, our main purpose is to work and make sure that everything within the union contract is covering GLBT issues and uh, of teachers and of paraprofessionals and clerks and everybody else within the school that's that's within our union contract but once we're protected and once those rights are achieved they sort of naturally flow to the students so sure. in effect we are standing up for the rights of students as well and we will absolutely support the formation of um, GSAs which are gay straight alliances that are formed in high schools and even actually in some elementary schools um, which are a staff person linking up with students who want to have an after-school um, social group essentially sure and and sure. do the activities that they do sure uh, well, of course, teachers are very much in the news here in Chicago uh, with the uh, with negotiations right. uh, uh, between the uh, board and uh, and teachers and a, and a possible strike uh, looming. Um, you know, we read in the media, particularly the Tribune, that um, the teachers are being unreasonable. Um, you know that they should be willing to satisfy, be you know, for uh, uh, be content with a longer school day, and um, and uh, lots of uh, and, and very little pay, very little pay to compensate. Um, by the way, if you are interested, uh, please uh, contact uh, the CTUNet.com to find. That's the uh, uh, okay. the, uh, uh, the listserv, I guess, or the uh, website. website of the uh, of the Chicago Teachers Union. They've got lots of interesting stuff on there. Um, so uh, let me ask you, cut to the chase here. Do you agree with that? How, how do you respond to the Tribune's uh, <laughs> attacks against you? Well, as you would imagine, absolutely not. I do not agree, and the union as a whole does not agree. Um, it, giving us two percent increase from where we are now and saying that that's fair and generous is really offensive quite honestly we were supposed to this past year receive a four percent increase so we're already behind the eight ball from where we should be so offering us two percent still puts us behind where we should be so as time is going on we are losing um income essentially Let's, yeah. we've got a caller, and, uh, you know, this is going to spark, a, I think, a Good lot evening. of... I have a question about bullying, okay? Now, my question is, we still get administrators who don't really want to deal with bullying, and it seems to me it's an easy solution. Why don't we have consequences, once it's been documented, that administrators are not taking care of the bullying, 
why don't we have uh, consequences for them, including up to suspension and maybe even uh, termination? Thank you. You want to address that? Yes. Thank you so much that you said that, because that is a huge problem, and we see that across the city. Bullying kind of gets treated like, oh, boys will be boys, or, you know, it's not a big deal. Every child has to go through this. But we know, especially in the GLBT committee, or committee, community, that it's, it's more than just um, a simple thing, and that we tend to be the biggest victims of bullying and the most extreme bullying that happens in schools. And so our committee and the union as a whole have treated that as one of our primary issues to deal with. And ju just like you just said, caller, thank you. Um, we need to hold administrators accountable in the building. They're the ones who set the safety and the atmosphere of the building, and they need to respond more, more appropriately, and they're not. Thank you. That, uh, that's uh, yeah. <laughs> I found the same thing when I was teaching out yeah. in the suburbs. It's a it's a it's a problem not just uh, not just with in Chicago, but it's it's it extends out right. there as well. Right. Uh, and you're absolutely right. I mean, administrators need to take this issue seriously, and they need to be doing their jobs. And that is, you know, right. standing up for their teachers and standing up for their students. Right. Um, okay, let's uh, let's let's get back to the uh, negotiations. Yes. Um, continue. Uh, you were you were you were right. you were answering well, charges by the Tribune <laughs> that two percent is a great raise. Right. Right. And uh, and I I hope I made that very clear. It is not great, um, and it's and it's offensive. And they should be ashamed to even suggest that to us uh, or to offer us you know that type of crumb because that that's not okay, and. You know, that's not just me saying that. Um, as you may all know, we had a huge demonstration downtown. And after that, um, all of a sudden things were changing. All of a sudden the board was like, oh, maybe we should start considering what they're asking us for or what they're demanding. Um, there were, I'm trying to think, there were nearly 10,000 of us out in the streets downtown stopping traffic, you know, right after, during rush hour saying, you know, we need to make sure that everybody knows what's going on and that this is not okay and to stop treating teachers as if, you know, we're not a legitimate profession because, of course, we are. And I, I would say one of the most noble, and, of course, I'm biased and you're biased, yeah. but, um, <laughs> you know, we, we are charged with caring for and educating our most precious resource, which is our children, and we need to make sure that we treat the profession mm -hmm. legitimately and on the level of, of that because this is, you know, um, this is not just a game. You know, this, this is right. for life and this is for the future of the city. And if we're going to continue to be a world class city, we need to pay our teachers and the rest of our, our school staff legitimate and fair wages. Boy, that's so eloquently said. Um, you know, uh, the, the city often says that it has uh, very, very few, very, very little resources to pay their teachers. But uh, I mean, what what do you think about these TIF, uh, 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 the, these TIF uh, 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 grants to uh, developers? Right. Um, I'm, I'm thinking uh, in particular of the Hyatt Hotel, the uh, Pritzker's. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, Pr uh, uh, this uh, Mrs. Pritzker, I believe, is a is a member. Of the board, um, they're building a, a large Hyatt luxury hotel in Hyde Park at the tune of uh, uh, five. I think it's five point two million or five point seven million. Uh, what's that about? I mean, uh, I, I couldn't agree. that be what's better? What's that about? <laughs> yeah, couldn't that and be better used? Absolutely, and and to suggest that we don't have the money to pay our teachers. You know, they they did a study and it came back saying that actually, it, with what you're asking, teachers should be getting a twenty six percent raise and you're going to offer two percent and then you still have tiff dollars not just a few but you yeah. know millions of them millions and, and millions of dollars for you it, know yeah. and so it, it's not so surprising that when we held our vote to see would we authorize a strike 90 percent of us voted and of that 90 percent 98 percent said yes we are ready to strike this is not we have you know, this is the line in the stand. We will not go past this um, without acceptable compensation for what we do. Yeah, that's a, that's an unprecedented uh, percent of, of teachers uh, in right. Chicago. I mean, they, they've made a, a very anti-strike uh, 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 bill passed in the uh, Senate uh, and uh, House 
downstate uh, to to require like a 75%. They thought we'll never get 75% right. of teachers. Right. And then CTU comes out with 90%. I think that's outstanding right. Thank uh, you. to show the solidarity. <laughs> and and right. you will need that solidarity. Right. I was very pleased to have heard a, a parent uh, on, uh, you know, in, in uh, t talking just in the last uh, or two f shows ago, making a phone call. She eloquently defended the teachers and compared uh, uh, Rahm Emanuel, our mayor, to uh, Scott Walker, the governor of Wisconsin, in his right. attitude toward teachers, his right. attitude toward public workers. Right. Um, do, do you, do you, uh, Mel? Do you anticipate a strike? Do you think it? You know, they've got something called an interim um, interim agreement. Okay, yeah. What right. can can you inform our um, audience? What is that, and what sure. what are the implications of that? Well. We don't have a full agreement, and so we are still ready, if need be, to strike. I, I want to really be clear about that. But in the interim, um, what has been, at least from our perspective, taken care of is stopping the threat of a seven hour and 40 minute workday, because that was just unacceptable, especially in light of you know a 2% or any raise, because the, the number of hours would then you know, make it so that we were actually having a pay decrease and not an increase. And then the other thing is that the, the, um, the board had to hire over 500 teachers that they had displaced and they're putting back into jobs that all of a sudden they were able to identify again when they originally said, oh, well, we, we don't have these jobs. You know, they all are gone. But through this interim agreement, they have somehow found these 500 and we're very happy about that. Yeah, that is great. But uh, um, we... We, again, we haven't reached an, a contract agreement. We haven't had a contract since the end of June. Here it is, you know, middle August. Our year-round schools have started up again, and then all the regular track schools will be starting at right after Labor Day. You know, and there's no no surprise that Labor Day, of course, is an important one. Sure. Um, and and some of the other issues that are still on the table, of course, are wages and benefits. Right. I'm sure. Right. But also class size. Do you do you think right. class size is 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 an important issue for uh, for teachers and parents and and students? Absolutely. Especially in Chicago, we have historically had to fight against classrooms that have you know well over 30 students in them and when you when you look at studies consistently they show student to teacher ratios are one of the most critical factors that affect success in education and we want to make sure that we can be successful we want to have all the tools necessary and part of that or a big part of that is legitimately um, small and contained classroom size you know, sure. of, of students. Sure. And of course it depends on the age age groups, but still we, we are always having to fight that because there's always this push by the board to just, you know, put more and more students in a room. Well, you know, you got your uh, Arnie Duncan, our, our uh, uh, former uh, superintendent here in Chicago, now right. uh, Secretary uh, of Education in the Obama administration, closing 60 schools. I mean, that doesn't that impact the class size? Absolutely. And, you know, we, we really don't support this whole notion of turning around schools, you know, completely going into neighborhoods that are struggling and just saying, okay, clean the slate, all, there's something wrong with all of these teachers and starting over without really focusing on what the struggles that those individual schools have and putting funds and resources to helping to correct exactly. those. Exactly. So, what uh, is there is the is there an issue also uh, concerning um, all this testing, you know, this high stakes testing that right. they're doing? Uh, I know they're doing a lot of it out in the suburbs, and the teachers out there are just just going nuts with the amount of uh, uh, not just paperwork, but the amount of time that they're spending teaching to the test. Right. And the kids are bored, and they, you know, and and uh, a lot of the interesting kinds of Things that you that teachers used to be able to do, right. they can't do anymore. Right. Is is that also a, a problem? Is that on the table for nego uh, being bargained? Absolutely, and everything that you just said, I would agree with. And and what I would add to it is is that the the standardized tests, uh, in addition to the problems that you laid out, they're also trying. They, the board of ed, are trying to link that to teachers' salaries. That whatever your students do on a test would would impact what you earned for that year which is Ooh. completely unacceptable to us and and we won't back down on that 
Oh my gosh, talk about, I mean, teachers won't share anything with each other. They won't try right. to, they, you know, if they know that their evaluation will depend on their test performance, right. why would they help out another teacher? You know, right. all that mentoring that goes on is, is right. going to, oh, that's, a, yeah, I, I hope that gets shot down. Um, you know, lot, lots of people feel that, um, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe teachers seem to have a bad rap out there, uh, um, uh, you know, and I, I, do, do, what do you think? Do, do you think that teachers are being kind of scapegoated in, in, in today's economy? They're, they're, they, they work nine months, they get, you know, they're getting paid, they're unionized. Uh, um, I, I mean, nurses seem to, to be okay, I mean, because people have given them grudging respect for their militancy and so on. Right. But I mean, uh, uh, teachers, What's going on there, Mel? It, 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 are teachers scape being scapegoated? Are they being attacked and uh, unfairly? Absolutely. Um, and I think, unfortunately, it's not just now, but certainly when economies struggle, teachers are, and are really all, all city and state workers, tend to be the ones that are scapegoated because it's seen as somehow there's a cush job. As you mentioned, you know, part of the year we're not in the classroom. And you know they feel like oh well they leave early and you know they eat bonbons you know I don't know, I don't know what the the exact um, stereotypes of us are but they tend to be negative and unfortunately in the press that's really reinforced and um, and I hope that more and more folks that know better talk to their neighbors and their friends and their family members and remind them that teachers go to work early and we stay late and we do work on the weekends and we do work you know while we're preparing our dinner and we're dreaming about our students because their lives are so you know chaotic and and we have you know not everybody comes from a household that's happy or healthy or wealthy and so we have all of those students and we care for them and are are striving to educate them and that's not just a you know eight to three experience of course not well, you know, it, it, it's 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 good to hear you say all these things, and uh, and and I always say to people too, you know, Mel, if 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 you don't have a well-paid, happy teacher in your classroom, someone whose benefits are good, and someone who feels secure in her job, is she? How is she going to relate with children? You know, somebody scared for their job and so on. That you know, it, it's it's imperative to have people who are uh, who are who are uh, who are content and happy and and feel that they're ha they haven't been you know screwed over by uh, absolutely by by, uh, by by the community so and I think if I could just add one last thing yeah I think that when you have teachers that are treated with respect the students then respect that profession and they respect the people as individuals and and also when you see us fighting for our rights and for respect and fair pay students will then consider doing that for themselves, whatever they wind up doing when they grow up. Boy, this has been great. Uh, I just have to really thank you, Mel. Um, I, I want to remind people it's ctunet.com. Lots of great information about negotiations. If you've got kids that are going back to school, uh, check it out. I also want to remind you of, um, you know, to join our boycott of uh, uh, Chick-fil-A. Uh, we don't we don't want these kinds of uh, uh, establishments in Chicago. Uh, they're 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 the CEO is a clear bigot. Uh, they got a policy of discrimination against, as you put it, single single people as well as uh, 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 gay, gay married people. Um, and um, and I'll, and then the, I guess the last thing to uh, remind you about again is that. Uh, North Halstead Market Days is August 11th and 12th. That's tomorrow and Sunday. We're going to be out there in force. We'll be passing out leaflets about Bradley Manning, the U.S. Army uh, uh, private, the gay private who's been accused of the WikiLeaks uh, exposures about U.S. war crimes in uh, Iraq. And also we'll be urging you to join, join us in the boycott of uh, Chick-fil-A. Again, Mel, uh, Mel Ferrand, I want to thank you again, and uh, and good luck, good luck in your in your in your struggles. Thank you so much.